What up Wolves, Blade Master here and uh, this is going to be something a bit different from usual. Um, I'm going to discuss something, uh, well the concept is probably going to be written in the title. But um, I thought of something yesterday uh, called Pick Trapping which, <laughs> which is going to be my tentative name for it. And uh, it's, some of it is going to be conjecture, some of it is going to be a bit far-fetched to some of my viewers. So if you want to just um, uh, skip straight ahead to the battle, I'll provide a link in the description or, you, or you can just um, click on the box in the top right now. But for those of you who are interested in uh, knowing what this is, or what I want it to be, um, you should stick around. So, okay, let's let's. I think the best way I can explain it is by providing a uh, providing a situation or a situational example. So, picture this: you're in quick battle. Um, you you and your opponent just keep you know switching factions, etc. You're moving on to whatever faction, and then for some reason your uh, opponent decides to uh, go to Galatia. Now you see that your opponent's gone to Galatia and uh, ideally you want to keep him there or this can be applied to a few other factions but for this example let's let's take Galatia. So you, you've, seen, you've seen him put uh, Galatia and he's waiting for you to, ch uh, to pick your faction so that he can just <laughs> change and uh, go you know pick a counter faction to that but you want him to stay at Galatia. And why is it that you want to, you want him to stay at Galatia? That's because Galatia, you know exactly what you can expect with it. You know what are, what are its strengths. You know what are its uh, weaknesses. Now the question is, how can you uh, induce your opponent to stick with Galatia? And more importantly, how can you pick a faction that wouldn't threaten him to change from Galatia to something more powerful? So you see him pick Galatia. Now it's your question on how on what faction to pick. Here's where my concept of uh, a trap faction comes into play. Usually for Galatia, you can pick a hard counter. Uh, you can see that they've got good melee infantry. So let's let's take a very quick look at Galatia now. You can see they have strengths in their melee infantry with Galatian legionaries. They have one elite spear, but besides them, they've got pretty shit options for spears. And we all know that their main um, strengths come in the form of their really, really cost-effective missile cap, the Galatian Raiders and their elite tier melee cavalry options which is their uh, noble horse. So they suffer from a lack of mid tier cav and lack of good missile infantry and they make up for it with their really strong javelin cavalry and very good melee infantry. Now a very good counter faction, just a typical counter faction would be something like Rome. Uh, you know they have very high armored units, they have uh, good missile cavalry to counter these guys, they have you know uh, options in melee cav, stuff like that. But the thing is when your opponent sees you pick something very powerful like Rome, he's probably just going to go ahead and pick something like Pontus because he knows that he'll never win against Rome. Again, you can choose Carthage or some other power faction and then your, your opponent will just see that you know with Galatia he can't really win that battle so he's just going to change. So instead of picking these, you want to pick a faction that's not threatening but also has some tools which people don't really know about uh, as much as you know uh, or basically just pick a faction that people don't really know the rosters to but that has some pretty good units that can counter uh, the faction that you want to trap. So for this example if your opponent if your opponent is going to take Galatia I think Tillis is a very good uh, trap faction. Now let's go ahead and actually select Tillis as our uh, faction and then let's put our, point, our uh, CPU as Galatia. And now what I'm going to do is just show you a very quick um, typical Galatian army. Uh, usually your opponent will bring at least two noble horse and then at least four uh, Galatian raiders. That's going to be his strength. He's going to want to put as much money into his strong units as possible and that's going to include at least you know five to six Galatian legionaries. And then he's going to bring a couple of levy freemen to make up for the lack of his melee cav or the numbers in his melee cav, maybe a couple of Galatian spears and then finally we've got 800 left so we're going to put one more Galatian legionaries. So this is a very strong line of uh, infantry, but it's all mid-tier. That's one thing you got to know. So the three really strong weapons that Galatia has are its Galatian legionaries, their Galatian raiders, and their uh, noble horse. Those are the three things that you need to watch out for. So in turn, you'd pick Tillis, and your opponent thinks, oh wow, Tillis is an underpowered faction, and it's not going to be too hard to beat. They've got very similar uh, rosters to Galatia, so it can be a fun uh, and fair, fair battle. Now what he doesn't know is that, Gal uh, that Tillis actually has a couple of tools that you know set it apart from Galatia and that can make it a pretty decent uh, counter to Galatia. 
The first of which I'll go over now are these Thracian warriors. Now Thracian warriors we all know are very strong against both against infantry and cavalry. And the thing is, when you set these Thra Thracian warriors against elite tier cavalry such as noble, oh god damn it, such as noble horse. Let me go ahead <laughs> and um, change my faction again and rebuild this. So it was seven Galatian legionaries, a couple of Galatian spears, and a couple of uh, what's it called, and then. Bam. So that's that's the Galatian army that we're going to face. There's going to be a pretty traditional Galatian army. So coming back to this, so we've got two Thracian warriors. Let's pick two or three Thracian warriors. And the reason why I'm going to pick Thracian warriors is because if you leave them for maybe even less than this, you know, uh, half a minute against enemy noble horse, those noble horse are done. They're just destroyed. So we're going to pick at least two to three of these Thracian warriors. That's going to be our first tool to combating Galatia. The second tool that's going to combat Galatia are these cheaper raiding horsemen. Now the reason uh, why I'm going to pick these is first they aren't as powerful as ra uh, as uh, Galatian raiders, but they have a ton of a ton more armor um, armor than Galatian raiders. Second, the um, you know the state of the battle for Galatia is going to be decided by Galatian raiders and how effectively your opponent can use them. If he can manage to get rear charges in with his Galatian raiders after killing off your cavalry with their javelins, he'll win the game. But on the other hand, if you can make it so that he doesn't use his Galatian Raiders as effectively as he can, then the game is basically lost by your Galatian opponent. And for that reason, you're going to bring four Raiding Horsemen. What these guys are going to do, uh, you can just set attack orders on enemy Galatian Raiders and that's going to be fine. Uh, they'll just chase them off and make sure that they don't contribute to the battle as much as possible. The second thing that they can do is they can eradicate the enemy noble horse. So if your opponent decides to bring a ton of noble horse instead of Galatian raiders, these guys can be very influential in um, winning you the cav battle along with Thracian warriors. So effectively we have taken care of two of Galatia's uh, massive threats which are its elite tier noble horse and its uh, really strong javelin cavalry. Now in terms of the um, the, uh, the infantry battle, you've got your third very key tool, which are your oath sworn. You're going to want to bring at least two of them, and these guys will be influential in destroying the enemy Galatian legionaries line. And on top of that, you can bring at least three tribal warriors who will help you in uh, holding out these Galatian uh, legionaries. You can see that they have very good melee attack and weapon damage, but these guys have incredible uh, melee defense, which will help them just last for a long time. And when there'll be pockets of space which will be created as the uh, infantry battle goes on, because your old will uh, will destroy enemy Galatian legionaries, while these tribal warriors will last for a long time, and just keep those guys engaged with them, so that you can in turn rear charge with your old um, after they're done with their uh, little engagement. Now, on top of this, you're going to want to bring at least two noble horse, and that's because uh, you want to you want to use these noble horse to hold up the enemy enemy noble horse and uh, you know then kill them off with the Thracian warriors or you can use these noble horse to rear charge enemy Galatian legionaries whichever way you can't really go wrong with with um, uh, elite tier melee cab like these guys finally you want to spend a lot of money on uh, well you want to spend a ton of money on levy freeman i would think maybe just bring two uh, Thracian warriors and then can we spend extra money on these guys no um you're going to want to bring then let's try and bring four Thracian warriors 140 we're left with 140 so basically what my what my intention is i want to bring at least two levy freemen and then use them to just set attack orders on the enemy galatian raiders and what that will do is they will they can just help in uh, uh, just chasing off those enemy galatian raiders and make sure that they don't contribute to the battle as much as possible so we've got two oaths one three tribal warriors which should win us the main line uh, we've got two uh, thracian warriors one of whom i mean each of them can help out in the cav battle Maybe a couple of Celtic warriors can never go wrong with some Celtic warriors. And then we want to bring one, two, three. Cool. So we've got five Levy Freemen, which should be more than enough to just swarm the enemy uh, cavalry and just win off the cavalry battle. One Celtic warrior can be used as, uh, you know, just rear charging for uh, your troops and stuff like that. Uh, in any case, these guys can hold out for a bit because they've got pretty decent melee defense. Um, so they, you, ca you can't really go wrong with bringing Celtic warriors. Thracian warriors will help out a lot in the cavalry battle. And um, finally, your oath sworn will win you the infantry engagement. So that's why I think this uh, the, that Tillis is a very good trap faction because one, your Galatian opponent will not be threatened by Tillis, and more importantly, two, uh, with Tillis you have the exact tools for countering uh, Galatia and winning you uh, a Galatian army. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, watch a replay between Galatia and Tillis, and let's see how that goes. 
Welcome back guys, it's still Blade Master and um, this is going to be a battle fought between Danko and I and this one, uh, like continuing on the uh, stuff that I talked about, uh, trap factions, where here we can see Danko initially picked Galatia and I decided to go with Tillis and he uh, wasn't threatened by it so he decided to go ahead with Galatia. Now let's see what army I've brought. You can see just from the battle that I've brought a ton of uh, numbers and in infantry. I brought a total of uh, two Celtic warriors and then uh, three tribal warriors and one Oathstone General. Finally, I've brought a bunch of spears as well. So I brought two spear warriors, two levy freemen, I believe, or maybe it's, yes, yeah, three levy freemen. And finally, I brought a total of four raiding horsemen with two noble horse. Now, uh, Danko has brought a quite unconventional Galatian army, but you can see that his strengths still lie in the same things. He's brought four Galatian raiders and four noble horse. So that's going to be a bunch of, bunch of money spent um, on cavalry. And then he's brought a front line of around six, I think, yeah, six Galatian swords, which are the really cheap uh, melee infantry. And finally, only two Galatian legionaries and a, a couple of levy freemen. So let's see how this battle goes. Um, he's moved up with his Galatian raiders, and immediately I'm going to move with my uh, with my raiding horsemen just to counter that threat. And uh, as long as I can induce these Galatian raiders to chase after these raiding horsemen and not contribute to the battle as much as possible, I would have. That's a huge win for me because raiding horsemen can be useful for for me, but I have a ton of other tools which can win me the game just on its own. Now um, these levy freemen, uh, sorry, these uh, levy freemen, I'm going to set attack orders on those. Uh, uh, Galatian Raiders and it, as long as they can get you know even a couple of javelin volleys on them then uh, that's th those Galatian Raiders will drop a, uh, very quickly because they have almost zero armor like 15 armor is very very low and I think all of that is just on shields now you can see he set attack orders with his Galatian Raiders onto my raiding horsemen and that's a good move by him because Galatian Raiders have much better melee stats than raiding horsemen now even if they do attack my uh, raiding horsemen in melee you can see they've, they've got uh, dealt a bunch of damage just with their javelins um, I've managed to um, basically trap one of his Galatian Raiders with my Raiding Horseman and I can uh, rear charge with the other uh, supporting one and thus win that battle uh, for myself. Here I'm also sending one Spear Warrior just to destroy this threat as soon as possible. This is not a good move by, my, uh, by me. I should have instead kept these guys close to my main line. Um, but I've also got, you know, Levy Freeman just in case he's, he decides to bring his Noble Horse uh, to charge into my, my Sword Heavy main line. Um, this is a much better tactic from my side. Um, you can see, let me just pause this, and, uh, put this in slow motion. Uh, I'm sending one of my Levy Freeman just to um, outside my battle lines and just to chase off his Galatian Raiders. Meanwhile, my two Raiding Horsemen are much closer to my line and that they can be pretty instrumental in uh, deciding this little Cav battle for me because he's brought two Noble Horse versus only one of mine. So they could be pretty influential there. Uh, here you can see he's charged straight in with his uh, Noble Horse. And I'm trying to support it with support with my Thracian warriors, but he's also charged with his uh, noble horse general. So these guys, Thracian warriors, you have to be, you have to know that they're very uh, poor at uh, dealing with charges. If you can manage to get them into a, a unit that's already engaged with something else, they will destroy it. But here you can see they've already lost around 40 men uh, just from that charge. He's also destroyed my Celtic warriors from that one charge, and then immediately pulled back with his noble horse, suffering only like nine casualties. So that's a very good move uh, on his part. He did the exact same thing here. Uh, my Celtic warriors have died from the charge. Maybe not, not a great idea bringing so many of them, just maybe one of them would have been uh, fine. Here my tribal warriors are going to engage with his Galatian swords. Uh, his noble horse is going to plow through my Thracian warriors. And um, now this is where the uh, pocket of space that I was mentioning earlier is going to come into play. My Oathstone is going to attack his Galatian legionaries and there the difference in quality should really um, shine through. And meanwhile my tribal warriors should do uh, you know, a good enough job at uh, holding out his Galatian legionaries here, they're going to win this little engagement. And uh, more importantly, his Galatian raiders are busy tr chasing off my raiding horsemen. And uh, in this, I've already won the, bat the that little flank battle. And I've got two uh, raiding horsemen that's that's ready to support this uh, this engagement over here. My noble horse got caught by his levy freeman, but uh, I think I charged straight into it. Yeah, I charged straight into it. And uh, I've also supported with one of my levy freemen. And uh, that, that little engagement is, uh, is going to go in my favor. He's charging in with his noble horse right onto my levy freemen, so they won't um, be able to last very long because they are obviously terrible on the charge. Um, but this is going to create an opportunity for my um, third extra tribal warrior, no, sorry, my Thracian warrior, to come in and support this battle. And this is exactly where they're going to start shining. You can see they've already got a couple of kills of noble horse, and that's his noble horse general. 
and uh, I'm putting I'll keep this uh, battle in slow motion for you know the foreseeable future because there's a lot of stuff going on and a, a lot of stuff that I want to talk about you, you can see here my uh, um, general I put them on headhunt and uh, they're just slaughtering this Galatian legionary and once they're done with that they have this very small area um, and within a couple of seconds they can just easily rear charge the extra Galatian legionaries unit which is uh, you know engaged in a pretty um, you know fair battle from with my Galatian or with my tribal warriors I managed to, uh, you know, just r run against his uh, tr Galatian Raiders for a long enough time and uh, now he's decided to rear charge my Tribal Warriors which could have been very influential at this uh, earlier on in the game. This is still a very good move and, uh, you know, that's kind of a loss on my part. I sh as long as you can, um, you know, keep running away with your Raiding Horsemen and doing what I did over here, um, just ganging up on them and forcing them into melee and uh, using your, your numbers advantage to kill them off then that's a victory on your your side. You can see already these guys are, are halfway, these Thracian warriors are halfway done to a, a single experience chevron. They've already got 15 kills of Noble Horse and that's exactly the tool that I was talking about. These guys can really like win you a, a, a cav battle on their own uh, if you can manage to micro them right. These Levy Freemen have bogged down the other Noble Horse unit and now my, my uh, extra remaining Noble Horse is just going to run in, support this battle and uh, force his Noble Horse general from running away. I've ganged up on that side and finished, them, finished those Galatian Raiders off. Meanwhile, my Tribal Warriors, as expected, have killed off these Galatian Swords. Uh, Thracian Warriors, I've been attacked by uh, Galatian Swords and these guys already got damaged by the charge. But they're going to be supported by this, um, this Raiding Horseman unit, which should be able to kill off these Galatian Swords now. Uh, this Tribal Warrior can come in and rear charge here. My Old Sword can uh, help attack this um, uh, infantry battle now that they've killed off that extra Galatian Legionaries unit. And my... Um, Tribal warriors over here, one good thing about them is that because of their high armor and uh, pretty decent health and melee defense, even though they don't have great morale, they, can, they, won't, uh, they aren't very susceptible to a rear charge because uh, their high health and good armor and me melee defense, that big combo, um, will mean that they won't get many casualties um, at an instant. So the morale shock isn't as high as it possibly can be. So. Here these Tribal Warriors are going to engage again with his noble uh, Galatian Swords and uh, that's going to be another infantry battle that will go in my favor. His uh, Noble Horse, you can see, have already got, do, are gone down to less than half strength. These Thracian Warriors are going to come in to attack them again. Here you can see, even, even though they got a charge off on, uh, on these Thracian Warriors and those Thracian Warriors will take a lot of casualties from them, you can see they, they've already got a double chevron just from killing off the, uh, you know, those uh, enemy Noble Horse. So his general is basically dead and you know the you can see from the timer that it took maybe like a minute or like less than a minute and uh, I've already managed to kill off his general and a huge part of his army. Now this noble horse is going to engage with uh, with his noble horse. Again this is a pretty fair fair fight but I've got the numbers here. My levy freemen are going to come in to help engage this uh, noble horse and bog them down and kill them off. Again the the fact that I have Oathsword in my roster has really helped me. You can see they've got 121 kills. And now that they're, they're, in, they're in a great position to just uh, help rear charge and kill off that uh, extra Galatian Legionaries unit. Meanwhile, my Tribal Warriors have done a decent job. Uh, they haven't, the, the quality differential has come into play here. Um, tribal Warriors will lose to Galatian Legionaries considering, you know, Galatian Legionaries are very strong units. But the fact, the fact of the matter is they'll do much better than any other mid-tier unit because they can hold out for a long time. My Raiding Horsemen have done brilliantly. 75 kills on some, you know, 36 on the other and they're just helping off. Uh, kill off the rest of his troops. My Levy Freeman, again, the fact that I brought so many of them has helped me because I just managed to bog down a lot of his units. Um, and yeah, now I'm just firing a uh, flaming shot over here just so that I can cause like this big morale penalty here. You can see that his Galatian Legionaries have started to waver. Uh, they have, despite the fact that they have great melee stats, they don't have great armor, uh, sorry, great morale. They've only got 55 morale, which is just above average. Um, and you know, the, the same as most other um, barbarian mid tier units. You can see this, this uh, Thracian warrior was instrumental in me winning this battle. 55 kills all from Noble Horse which resulted in them getting a double chevron. And that's the end of the game guys. So the three weapons that I talked about earlier on in the game, uh, Galatia, uh, Raiding Horsemen, Thracian Warriors and Oathsworn, all three of them did brilliantly. Uh, Raiding Horsemen uh, helped in you know running away with uh, or uh, inducing his Galatian Raiders to chase after them. You can see at the end of the day they didn't get many kills at all, 33, 19, 30 and 33. Whereas my, Gala my Raiding Horsemen, some of them got pretty comparable kills but some of them got um, a good amount of kills, 82 and 57 on a couple of them. 
The second uh, weapon that I was talking about, the Thra uh, Thracian warriors, one of them did brilliantly. 55 kills, killed off his, well, basically single-handedly killed off his noble horse general. And uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. They help out in a cavalry engagement better than any other swords uh, or spear unit. The other one also did pretty decently, 69 kills. And the one that got charged in by his noble horse predictably did terribly. Uh, my tribal warriors didn't do great. 89, 72 and 151 kills, not bad. But the fact of the matter is they, they helped just, you know, hold out his Galatian legionaries for basically the entirety of the game. And that's because their melee defense helps a lot. And finally, the third big uh, weapon that uh, Tillis has to counter um, uh, a Galatian army, the Oathsworn, which I probably should have brought two of them. But even though I just brought one of them, which was my general, they, he managed to just destroy the um, Gal one Galatian legionary unit just by himself and then killed off the extra Galatian swords as well. So they did really well too. So anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this replay. And uh, let me know if you think my concept of pick trapping is just something maybe too far-fetched or if it's actually a, a worthwhile strategy to explore. I've got a couple of other uh, ideas for, for trap factions that I can uh, bring to you guys maybe in a couple of days. Uh, I do need to upload like the No Holds Bar tournament too. But um, anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this idea and uh, hope you enjoyed the replay and stay tuned for more. Peace.